Well, hello, my friends, and welcome to another episode from my Minecraft Survival Let's Play series. All right, my friends, in the last episode, we knocked out this absolutely fantastic looking building. And I was a little rushed on time, so I was not able to showcase the inside. So I guess let's go ahead and check it out. So like I had mentioned, I was putting in a little catch hopper of water. And I did grind out the rest of those target blocks. So this thing is now finished all the way up. If I can fly up here, we'll see that we have a little bit of snow, obviously. But all of our pumpkins and melons are in. Just waiting for them to finish growing up up and then we are in business and this thing has been producing we're gonna need to hurry up and get on top of the the farmer trade over in our dark pyre state building so that way we can start cashing in on all that but first of all my friends i want to apologize this episode is obviously going to be quite late i have been in a situation at work where i've had to work some extended hours due to some unforeseen circumstances which i was happy to oblige but unfortunately that did cut into my recording time but don't you worry my friends this episode is going to be action-packed i have so many plans for today's episode starting off with this little spot right here and if we have time which i'm sure we will I've been working on finalizing the design for our row houses, and then hopefully we can get almost this whole block done in this episode. So you guys, if you're ready for today's episode, do me a huge favor. Hit that like button if you're excited for today's episode. Subscribe if you're new, and check it out. Optifine. <laughs> I've been doing some background stuff, which we... I want to surprise you guys with in the future. We're going to be saving most of this for the world tour, but oh, I'm so pumped for today's episode. So what do you say we get things started? I'll grab up some resources and let's go ahead and get this first building installed. Oh man. All right, guys, I am back. Resources have been gathered as what you can see behind me. And let's just take ourselves a quick little sneak peek. Sand, some blacks, or sorry, I'm, uh, Deep slate in the various varieties, regular stone, smooth sandstone, a little bit of tough black concrete, and then miscellaneous decorative items. All right, so I think this point, it's a pretty clear uh, idea of what we're doing, we're doing a skyscraper, but I want you guys to go ahead in the comments, guess and let me know what you guys think we're going to be putting inside this one. And since you're there, don't forget to give this video a like. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, there is nothing left now than to go ahead and kick things off into montage mode. Just kidding. We got replay mod. Let's do this.
Oh, gotta stop this time lapse, because guess what he has? Small drip leaf. Yeah, I, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, oh, stop everything. Need this in my life. Don't even know how long I have been waiting for that. Okay, well, since I already got this uh, time lapse stop, let's get a little look see. All of our scaffolding's in the way, but you can see the general look of the building. All that's left to do now is to black out all of the windows, like what I did with this residential building, and then add in all of our texture variation, our leaves, and our greenery, and I don't know, you know, maybe <laughs> build the rest of it, because this right now is just a front facade, but that's okay. On the sides, we're going to do the same thing that I did on that building with just uh, the stone, but we're going to work in a gradient since most of this will be seen from this alleyway. I don't want to just have a completely gray wall, so we'll try to find some ways to mix it up. Maybe pop in a few windows for like a ladder well. I don't know what, but we'll find ways to spruce it up. So I'm going to finish trading with that villager, or sorry, the uh, merchant, and then you know dispose of him properly. And then we'll get right back into it, my friends. I must say, the wandering trader has got to be the best method for acquiring leads. All evil laughter aside, I did spend a little bit more time in this world, as you can see. The road is retextured to match more of the deep slate, at least in a little bit of it. I didn't go through the whole thing. But then I went ahead and spent a little bit of time detailing out our structure. So if we were to just take a quick little look, you can see I went back in and added in some sandstone. Oh wait, ready for it? Sandstone, and then some, let's see, where is it? Some regular sand, right up there. And just kind of mixed it all in, really at random. I couldn't really work too much with a gradient, being we are limited due to the sandstone walls. Because, you know, walls made out of sand were not quite... Uh, at that point in Minecraft <laughs> or anything. I don't think they can do gravity walls in Minecraft. I don't even know how that would work. But anyways, then I went back in, added in the vines and the azaleas for the hanging vegetation. And yeah, that's about as far as I got. I started the alleyway and I'm at the point to where I'm ready to enclose in the other two sides of this. So I went ahead and grabbed myself uh, blocks to set up in a gradient. So we're gonna start at the bottom with gravel and then from there move into regular stone and then andesite and then light gray wool and finally ending off with light gray powder and then we're going to outline out the windows with the stone brick stairs just that way they have a little bit of structure to them and also because you know, I don't have any stairs that follow the gradient so I'll go ahead and get a little bit started on it kind of show you guys what I mean and explain it as I'm going and then we'll move right on to the next project Taking a step back from my typical musical time lapses, I just wanted to talk with you guys a little bit about how I develop gradients. I was actually recently watching a video by Jermsey Boy, and he was kind of talking about gradients and how you really shouldn't limit yourself to what the actual title of it is called within Minecraft. You know, just because it is a sandstone pillar or an oak plank doesn't mean that it can't work well. Some of the stuff needs to be seen from a distance but I kinda it really spoke to me and that's something that I am going to be trying to utilize more within my world because I always kinda had that mindset of it should be kinda within the same build not style but the build genre of the other blocks but with these you can see that with the gravel to the stone and now up to the, the andesite we're all kinda staying within that gray scale but there's enough variation to create a little bit of interest and my kind of motivation behind how I'm doing the actual gradients kind of layering is I was thinking about how these row houses are going to be blocking most of the light as well as our dark pyre state building. So there's actually going to be little peaks and valleys from where it is a little bit more sun worn in places than others. And that's kind of the mindset that I had when I was placing down all these blocks. And before you guys jump into the comments and saying that I am layering that all wrong, I do plan on adding in some paintings and all that to act like graffiti there between the gray wool and the light gray concrete powder. So with that, my friends, let's jump back into the world and get some detailing done. 
Alright, now that our building has four walls with a beautiful gradient on it, we can get to work on the detailing portion of it. So as you see, I went ahead and pre-marked out the locations for the windows, so we'll just start by knocking those out right quick. Simply by just taking out a total of four blocks with the two torches being the actual locations of windows, so we are following the same height as the front facade. So we'll simply just knock out four just like that. And then it'll be a matter of stair, stair, and then black stained glass. Nothing too complex about that. So I'm going to knock those out and then we will move right along to the fire escapes. As you can see behind me, all of the windows are placed in, and now it is time to do the tricky part. So I did sketch this out in a creative world, however, it is a little bit difficult to get right. So I believe we're going to start with iron trap doors, span them to, say, right about there, and then we'll bring the iron bars. No, we want to go one more. Let's go one more. Just like that. Fall obviously don't forget that step okay so we'll just go like that so that way we can still jump in and out and we did carry that one more like that there we have it okay so now for the ladders we're going to be using acacia trap doors and then we will use the mechanic that you can attach ladders to the back side of them so we just want to make sure that we have this thing timed out to where we are actually putting the ladder on the right side so if we were to go like this, we should now be able to, in theory, place the ladder just like so. Since we can't go on that block because there's a railing, we have to step it in one. So that'll be there, and then where you drop down should be right there for that one. Which is not quite going to line up well. Maybe we should bring this out one more just to make sure that, you know, the people that aren't going to be using this at all <laughs> can have this thing connected up properly so we'll just go like this then drop it out so they can get out and go down and we got our access hole through the that would drop down to the alleyway and typically you make it so that you know thieves and hooligans and all that can't get in here so this thing will actually be a gravity drop so we do not want this to go all the way to the ground so keeping in mind that we want the ladder to be on this block, we need to place the trap door over here. And I think the easiest way to do that would be to take a temporary block, just like that. And then we can attach it just like so. Now the only problem is going to be that we can't attach there. So maybe what we'll do is we'll just sneak this one up on the upper level, perhaps, since the ladder's on the other side then that will give us the liberty to dra drop it just like that. And I'm not too worried about trying to make all these patterns match. So we'll just follow that all the way down. And by all the way down, I only mean a few more blocks so that way we have that gravity aspect like I was saying. So maybe to right about there. Let's try that out. Now the next thing will be to drop a whole bunch of ladders on it. And there we have it. That would be one row. Oh, I did actually forget one thing, and that'll be a little bit more of a bracing factor, being we have, since we are limited to, to Minecraft's mechanics, so I just wanted to just kind of strengthen up this area to make it actually look like the ladder's attached by just wrapping the bar around a little bit more. Something that's not too visually heavy, but then kind of gives you that indication that, hey, this thing's supported since these blocks obviously aren't connected. So now there's nothing left then for me to go ahead and continue this up, kind of stopping at each story and zigzagging. So let me get to that, guys, and then I will bring you back in to take a look when we're done. All right, my friends, I am back, and as you can see below me, our fire escape is done. It wasn't too bad. It kind of got in the rhythm, and it, it went pretty quick. And then I actually went back over here and added in a whole bunch of paintings, you know, graffiti, all of this. I figured it's an alleyway, so it seemed fitting, and plus then it will help break up the vast majority of the gravel texture on that wall there. Because I don't want it to look very flat and boring, so I thought that a little bit of graffiti would do it well. And then I copied up that same idea right up here at the top. 
So just like I told you guys during that little time lapse there, I, I did plan on filling up all that space. So having that long flat line shouldn't really hurt us. I can always add one or two blocks in. Not a huge deal at all. All right, so let's tally up the votes. Who voted for what? Anybody guess a cactus farm? Because that's what I was doing. I went ahead and built up this bottom layer because, once again, it's not like I'm trying to show you guys the whole creative process or anything like this. This is a pretty tried and true design. So you just have your water that's going to push all the broken off cactus over there. I just got a little hopper chain just going into a single chest for now. Uh, since the melon and pumpkin farm is right on the other side of the wall, I might actually flop the water and go this way. So that way I can combine it all in one spot to turn it all into bone meal or send it off to a smelter, whatever I need. So that's, that's an easy flop if need be. If not, I can just water line it somewhere else. But yeah, then you just take the water sources, you put a slab of the top layer, sand, and then your cactus, and then you just build up a little box all the way around it. And then you can either build another water layer, which I see a lot of people doing, just make it a little bit more lossless. But I'm going to take a chance and just go straight into the next layer because I have so much vertical room up here, but not a lot of horizontal. I figured that, why not? If it's a little bit lossless, it's not going to break my heart. I mean, this thing's going to be making way more cactus than I will ever need. So straight from there, you have a one block air gap that it's going to try to grow into and then a half a block from where it goes up into the next slab. So I'm just going to repeat that until I get all the way to the top. You can kind of see that I was being conscious of the design of this where the wall steps in. So that's why this is actually bumped in here on both sides. So let me get to building this up guys and then we will move on to the next project because this, I told you, it's going to be a big episode. We got a lot of stuff planned today. So, all right, my friends, as you can probably assume by the roof behind me that the cactus farm is done. And you'll see I went ahead and dropped a roof on our melon and pumpkin farm. I wanted to make sure that we were still getting the proper light levels without having to go through and add in a whole bunch of torches or sea lanterns and such. So I just went ahead and put a glass roof. And if you guys are very observative, you might also notice that my... Second slot there in my hot bar has a diamond pick in it because <laughs> Yeah, I, I kind of messed up my friends So I'm just they're just building away on this cactus farm. I wish I was recording and I'm just Moving around minding my own business and I definitely hit Q Right above a cactus and threw my netherite pick on top of a cactus and destroyed it yeah after that i was like yeah i think i'm done for the day that's enough minecraft for today so i went ahead and called it a day there but not a worries at all we got plenty of netherite as you well ancient debris like you saw at the beginning of this episode so i'll just zip on over there and get myself a new one we got the villagers with the books we got the netherite no problem at all all right, my friends, we have our wonderful silk scribe pick back in our inventory. And I have already gone through and gathered a whole bunch of resources. I'm not going to bore you guys with going through each individual one because we're going to be four different houses in this row, each one having their own different palette. So without further ado, my friends, let's go ahead and speed things up into warp speed and get some row houses built. <laughs> All right, enjoy my friends.
and just like that, our row homes are complete. Well, as much as they are without any detail or life or a back wall, but <laughs> yeah, after that time lapse, I had to go back into my creative world and design up the top. I wasn't quite sure where I was going to take it, but I think I got a design nailed down on the head. And then I swapped out the standard blackstone for the polished blackstone. I think it was just too busy by the time we got to the top. And then I brought the walls all the way down to the street so they're not floating anymore. Added in some pretty basic stairs as well as some gardens to give us a little bit more life and a reason for vines climbing up them. And then I also added in some bars on the side to kind of give it more security. The house being it's right on a main sidewalk. But that's going to have to do it for today's episode, my friends. I do hope you enjoyed this action-packed video full of so much building and a little bit of fun along the way. Be sure to hit that like button. And if you've gotten this far and you haven't subscribed already, you know, what are you doing? Come on, man. It's free. Let's do it. Join the community. Let's keep this ball rolling. But with that, my friends, I'm going to leave this video with a little bit of teaser pictures for what we have planned for the world tour that's coming up as episode 25. But with that, my friends, I do hope that you enjoyed today's episode, and I want to make sure that you all have a good one, everyone. <laughs>